um, I'm a change guy. I run large-scale change at banks and other places. I am pretty persistent. But I'm also high awareness of what I'm doing and what I'm doing change. I generally work end to end in banks. And the reason I'm telling you stories is because banks, as Timur said, are very complicated pieces. You've got a front office distribution group, you've got a product group, you've got a risk group, you've got an ops group, you've got a tech group, just to keep it simple. And then you multiply that by all the divisions and all other uh, functional groups that you have a very complicated problem solved. And on a chain basis, the project I just came out of the bank at is I was digitally measuring the processes of the bank from the front of the bank to the end of the bank. Which means each day I could see what the measures were doing, what the adjudicators were doing, what the ops people were doing, and we're using data visualization to see that in the dashboard. We're seeing things like time to a decision, quality, uh, number of resubmits, error rate, and time to resolution. I'm doing it on an end-to-end basis. So that's the premise for the talk. That's what I told Tim Rowe when I was telling him what I do. And that's what I want to share with you today. now. Just so I get that please frame of reference here. You have these things called clients at the front of the bank. We call them just four groups to keep it simple. And they come in by a variety of channels, branch, online, and mobile. And they start their journey because each one of them is different. One's a new time mortgager, one's a refinance mortgager, one's a uh, investment property, and they all want different things from them. So their journeys are different. Their expectations are different. If I'm refinancing, I want it done, I want it the cheapest rate, and I want it, I want no hassle. If I'm a new borrower, I'm very unsure, I need to get some trust built. I need to help you educate, have you educate me. And I'm going to be very timid about all the documentation I have to give you. So I want to be helpful along that journey. So the journey design changes depending on who the segment is and who the client is. And then you take them through the back of the bank, the origination function, the adjudication function, the fulfillment function, and we have different expectations of that journey too. If I'm a first-time homeowner, I don't know what it means to go to a lawyer to give them my docs so I can move the mortgage. If I'm a refinancer, I want no crap. I just want it done. I don't want to even touch it. So there's different expectations from front of the bank to the back of the bank, depending on the journey. That's why I do this diagram course. So that's what I'm talking about. When people talk a lot about client experience, they talk about this stuff. I'm talking about the nuts and bolts of getting it done. And that's where the change is most difficult in the bank. Because people approach it from a paper-based paradigm. And so if you think about a paper-based paradigm, I have a form. I move that form through the bank. I add a little more information. I move that form again. I add a little bit more information. I move that form. Think about it differently. Think about it digitally. I now am gathering MPAC information for the property tax information. I'm gathering Revenue Canada information for their income information. I'm gathering, gathering MLS information for their mortgage, for the real estate listing. I'm gathering their credit bureau information. And the only three bits of information I need from that client is how much and which property and when. So all of a sudden that process is no longer a paper-based design process. It's a digitally designed process. And think about every process in the bank or a hospital or a telco that has been designed from a paper-based paradigm. All of a sudden they're no longer designed that way. They're designed digitally with my experience. So all of a sudden things have to change really markedly because that process with all that data is a completely different process than the old paper paradigm. Now, how many people in this society actually get the digital paradigm? Okay. The tech guys are still going to be writing my requirements doc from A to Z. The ops guys are going to be saying, where's my paper? I put my date stamp on. The risk guys are going, I need evidence. And the policy guys are going, make it comply with policy. And the regulators are going to be able to show me my paper record. So all of a sudden, this, this digital paradigm is going to change a ton in hospitals, telco, and banks. And so that's what's going to change here. And then they have to prioritize it. Yeah. Against all the other stuff, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. 
I just thought I'd set the stage so we're all the same sort of page because it's a little bit of a wild ass topic. So that's what I thought we'd talk about. So now, for me, business models of transforming, changing, and evolving, they are disappearing. The paper based paradigm business model is disappearing. If you're still dealing with paper in, I say, three to five years, you're in the dinosaur model for business. Every business is really, really, really changing. The battleground is actually to align our processes end to end to consistently deliver brand aligned journeys. The brand is no longer fungible. If our processes don't deliver the brand, the client will see it because it's digital and they will leave us. So we cannot no longer control the brand. We have to design the brand into our processes. Okay? Firms that have effective end-to-end -end process management grow 42% faster and are 18% or 20% more efficient. So there's real money in this. Okay? People that, if you think about designing strategy, brand, culture, behavior, execution, need to align. I can't have my tech guys thinking some other thing is some, if they're building this, and I want this, and they're building that. That is not the way. You have to get that totally aligned. And that is a, a transformation agenda that a lot of people aren't clear on and not very easy to done. And it requires end to end coordination and senior leadership and vision. And that is a little bit of a tall order. So that's what I'm trying to get us to talk about. That's where I think the world's changing a lot. So clients are leaving. Clients are choosing. Clients are going, I want my bank to be like Google. I want my bank to be like Apple. I want my telco to be easy to deal with. So there's leaders actually identify the segments they're trying to work with, identify the value they give to those segments, identify the interactions, and then execute the operational journey to make that happen. People who are leading measure the employee performance and the experience together. My employees who can't deliver on the experience need tools to enable them to deliver on the experience. Support models in all of our organizations is a paper-based support model. Well, let me look that up for you, sir. Or if you think about a call center-based or a client care-based support model where you have people who are specialists at resolving issues, all of a sudden the digital world they become more important than they have been in the past. So the support model to enable the employee to look like they're doing the right job in, 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 to be consistent with the brand has to also become consistent. And those who invest in analytics heavily perform the S&P by 64%. So using data and information across the process to improve corporate performance is worth it. Uh, but it's cultural and it's behavioral. And so what I ended up doing in the bank is using data information to change the dialogue. So I would call bullshit. I'm looking to take, sorry. I would call a foul if people weren't behaving the right way. And I would kind of darken the skies with data to prove the point, to change the culture, to modify the behavior. What does it mean? It's not so simple. It means we have to align and syndicate the vision and actually get the priorities. That funding question you said, you got to actually throw other traditional projects out of the boat because they're no longer relevant in the new world. We have to establish some governance and senior sponsorship require specialist skills in mobile, mobility, analytics, and architecture and digital strategy. Those skills are rare. And they're not a lot. Everybody's thinking functionally still. So you got to give them a lot. You need to have joint end-to-end -end teams in client experience, user interface design, and sales discipline. You need to have pe people who are strong as managers and strong as transition <coughs> managers to lead that change. Leading that change, you need to actually accept that you're going to be changing. So you actually have to change the way you change because the traditional way of changing isn't quick enough. 
And so that's a big difference. And if you do that well, uh, CGY and MIT put out a study that says if you have strong transition management capability, you perform 26% better, and you have higher market value, and you're, and you're more profitable if you can do a change better. So. But a strategy to execution gap exists, which is why I'm starting a consulting company. Because uh, operating models need to transform. Traditional process fixes don't work. Many people say, I just do process reengineering. Well, old traditional process reengineering, and I used to do a lot of it, is whack a mole. Fixed form 32B, fixed form 32C, fixed form 32D, or fixed form 27, and you just whack a mole. That whack-a-mole of fixing partial post parts of the process isn't going to actually fix the process end to end.